Hey all, Ron here from Military Images Magazine with a new episode of Life on the Civil War Research Trail. You know, among the lasting impacts of the 1862 Battle of Seven Pines in Virginia was the wounding of the then commander of the Army of Northern Virginia, General Joseph E. Johnston. You students of the Civil War know the man who replaced him after Johnston's wounding was Robert E. Lee, and he led the Army of Northern Virginia through the war's most historically significant battles and the surrender of that army at Appomattox. A couple days after Lee took command, Colonel Evander M. Law, a brigade commander, saw Lee and sized him up for the first time. Like all soldiers, Colonel Law looked at him at Lee with a discerning eye. First impressions are lasting, and the first view of Lee was indelibly etched into Law's brain. In 1887, a quarter century after Lee became commander, that commander whose name is synonymous with the Army of Northern Virginia, Law recounted that first view. It appeared, appeared in a magazine called the Southern Bivouac, a great name for a publication. Now, I have to tell you that Law's description really surprised me because like probably most of you who are students of the Civil War, you have that vision of the gray-bearded Lee. You've seen him in countless photographs and engravings, but that's not what Law saw. So let me read this description to you. And you can take in the moment for yourself. Imagine, imagine seeing Lee for the first time as commander of the Army of Northern Virginia. Here's what Colonel Law had to say. Quote, as I was standing near the Nine Mile Road a day or two after the Battle of Seven Pines, General Lee passed along the road accompanied by two staff officers. I had never seen him before and he was pointed out by someone near me. I observed the new commander of the Army of Northern Virginia very closely and with a great deal of interest. General Johnston was universally beloved and possessed the unbounded confidence of the Army, and the commander who succeeded him must be, quote, every inch a man, end quote, and a soldier to fill his place in their confidence and affection. General Lee had up to this time accomplished nothing to warrant the belief in his future greatness as a commander. He had made an unsuccessful campaign in Western Virginia the year before, and since that time had been on duty first at Charleston and then in Richmond. It was naturally a great deal of speculation among the soldiers as to how he would pan out. The general tone, however, was one of confidence, which was invariably strengthened by a sight of the man himself. Calm, dignified, and commanding in his bearing, a countenance strikingly benevolent and self-possessed, a clear, honest eye that could look friend or enemy in the face. Clean-shaven, except a closely trimmed mustache, which gave a touch of firmness to the well-shaped mouth. Simply and le neatly dressed in the uniform of his rank, felt hat and top boots reaching to the knee, sitting his horse as if his home was in the saddle. Such was Robert E. Lee as he appeared when he assumed command of the Army of Northern Virginia in the early days of June 1862, never to relinquish it for a day until its colors were furled forever at Appomattox. So that's what Colonel Law had to say about that first view of Lee. Now I'll add, for someone who comes from my background as a photo collector, I wanted to show this particular image of Lee because it was mass produced early in the war and folks both in the North and in the South purchased 
paper copies of this photograph in a format called the carte de visite, or as we collectors say nowadays, the CDV. And these images were put into photo albums, really was the Facebook of the 1860s. So nowadays, when we look and we see this image for sale in an auction or on a dealer's website or at a show, we tend to we sort of tend to step back a little bit because it's just not the Lee we know. The darker hair, a little bit bushy on the sides, that neatly trimmed mustache, the clean shaven fa face, um, that Colonel Law noted in his description. It feels foreign to us. It doesn't feel like the Lee that we know, the Lee that has been presented to us because we know that later Lee with the thick gray beard. And so it makes this image here much more interesting to me because if you were in Virginia with the Army of Northern Virginia during the Peninsula Campaign in 1862, the summer of 1862, you would not have seen Lee with the gray beard, you would have seen a Lee that looked a lot more like this. And now granted, this particular image is taken from a pre-war photograph and embellished with the uniform by a photo retoucher, sort of like Photoshop of the 1860s. But still, the hairline uh, and the mustache may be a bit grayer, but this is the Lee or closer, I think, maybe to the Lee than the Lee that we think of today. So there you have it, the first person eyewitness account of Colonel Evander M. Law, a brigade commander in the Army of Northern Virginia, his first sighting of Robert E. Lee, Law recounting that first view 25 years after Lee took command of the Army. Thanks for listening. We'll see you on the next episode of Life on the Civil War Research Trail.